live from the Halloween headquarters of Adafruit. It's the same desk as always. But anyways, it's Ask an Engineer. <laughs> I'm a vampire engineer today. Yeah. Ah. Um, no, uh, it is a Halloween-y themed. It's getting there. Ish, yeah. Ask Engineer. But as usual, I am the undead engineer. And with me is Mr. Lady Ada. Hello. Who, who looks always kind of gothy, too. So we're, we're doing yeah, pretty, pretty good here. And we've got all sorts of exciting scary. engineering news, advice, questions, giveaways, show and tells, That's all right. sorts of exciting <clears> things. <throat> Some new products, some cats. Tell them what is on tonight's show. On tonight's show, the code is AudioFX, 10% off. Everything in the Adafruit store that's in stock is now the best time to do it right before Halloween. We'll talk about some Halloween stuff soon. You can still get stuff if you order it like right now. now. You should do it now. Do it now. Show and tell. Talk about all the amazing things people shared on the show and tell. We do it every week, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. People around the world show us cool stuff. Mailbag. Pack the mailbags up by and reads a letter. We actually read it. Pack its envelope. Pack it. Can't talk. Help Wanted, the Adafruit Jobs Board, uh, maker, hacker, artist friendly place where you can post jobs or get a cool job. We'll talk about the Adafruit Learning System, some new guides this week. We'll get some Time Travel Tuesday, talk about some stuff from the past maker, artist, and engineering world. Wearables, some cool things to show and share. 3D printing, all the news that's fit to 3D print. We've got some Raspberry Pi stuff going on. We've got new products. We're going to answer your questions. Every trivia question, maybe a little bit of top secret. We'll see. All that and more on, you guessed it, Ask an Engineer. Woo. That's right. Woo. Spooky show. It's spooky. OK. So first up, uh, code is uh, audio effects. It's 10% off in the Adafruit store. Everything that is physical and in stock. Yeah. So if it's software, we can't discount it. If it's a gift certificate, we can't give, discount it. If it doesn't exist or virtual, we if don't. If it doesn't exist or it's virtual or it's not in yeah. stock, we don't have it. But anything that you can actually physically get in a box, 10% off. Yeah, OK. Next, uh, don't forget, Halloween is coming up. We have our giant amount of posts. Pound Electronic Halloween on the Adafruit blog. You can see all sorts of cool projects and more. Um, I think I'll be able to do my costume. Uh, I've decided what I'm going to do. OK. And it is I am only allowed to use things here in the Adafruit factory okay. for my costume that is related to Dune. So okay. I, I've, I just want to show that you can do anything at Adafruit. if you're trapped in a factory. You're trapped in Adafruit, okay. Yeah, so that's, that's what I'm going to do. So that, that'll be a fun show okay. uh, next week, Wednesday. Hopefully okay. I'll have it done around then-ish. So okay. we'll see, got this weekend. Um, Bitcoin. Yeah, we're still taking Bitcoin. It's working out. I mean, like, people still use it. Okay. It's fine. Yeah. It's like, it's, it, I, it, it's like not even exciting anymore. Ooh, this crazy thing. There's just people who they just use Bitcoin as a regular form of payment on our site. And yeah. uh, so I remind you on the show. I don't know how long you keep this slide going. Um, next up, free stuff. So right now, $99 or more, free promo pro to half size. $200 or more, free P UPS ground in the continental USA. This is real UPS shipping. This is trackable, guaranteed ground shipping. Yeah. Reliable, dependable. Mm -hmm. Doesn't disappear to who knows where other carriers, post office, Sure, post more post This is straight up UPS. Yep. Okay. The UPS guy or lady you know and love will deliver this to you. Yeah. Show and tell. Okay, lady. Oh, yeah. Oh, show, and show and tell. And tell. We, had a, we had a fun, uh, yeah, that was fun, fun. show and tell with some new people, too. Tony Cola came back. He's uh, Adafruit, Adafruit Northwest, so he has to show up every week. And he made a quickie project this week. He used the audio effects soundboard that we'll be talking about soon to make a screen box. It's a wooden box with a PIR sensor in it. And when the box is opened, uh, the PIR sensor triggers the audio effect board, and it screams. And he says his cat is completely horrified and terrified and ran away. So I guess it works. And maybe he'll put it outside and terrify the local kids. Noah and Pedro came in. They are from Adafruit Northeast. Sorry, Northwest. Sorry, no, Pedro, Southeast. Southeast. Sorry. I don't it's know. fine. I don't even know where I'm going. Get your compass uh, they, sensor. They showed off. I know. Get compass sensor. They ha showed off a future project, which is a ray gun uh, that makes that the real all-in-one 3D printed pro trinket powered ray gun with audio effects and LEDs. It looks so cool. We were gonna do it for Halloween, but now it's just a general cosplay project. And, you know, cosplay is like all year round. There's like a Comic Con every week now. That's right. Um, and also uh, previewed this week's video, which is going to be live tomorrow in the tutorial. Uh, flying toaster pendant, which they made for me. 
So cute little flying yeah. toasters. Can, can Check I, it can out. Can I put it overhead for a second? Uh huh. Okay. Why not? Yeah, sure. These are hand drawn toasters. So this is an OLED. Um, oh, thanks. And Phil B did an excellent job with this project. And when you tap it, it turns on and displays these adorable flying toasters and toast. And you can like reprogram it if you want more or fewer toasters or whatever. Um, and they fly in their hand drawn, so it's great. Looks, it looks exactly like the original. And it has a little Mac style 3D printed case. Yeah. And it's got a battery and it's rechargeable. It's just super cute. Show the clouds. Cool. Show the clouds. Show the clouds. Clouds. Okay. Show the clouds while we're here. We also have Mario clouds. It's a, it's a version, very similar, a little animation, but this time it just shows Mario clouds. It's got a little kind of Game Boy esque yeah. interface. Got the little notches down here. Okay, we now return you to Chantel. Okay, so I was about to talk about Chantel. Lon came back. He's also working on a NeoPixel ray gun. He's actually been showing off his uh, NeoPixel inspired costume for a while, and um, he he actually added audio effects as well as his ray gun. And he's molding and learning how to do like smooth on molding and stuff for this ray gun. And uh, it's looking really really sweet. This is like a you know what's cool about these ray guns? You know like they can be passed on to grandchildren. They'll work forever. Like what's gonna break? It's just it, LEDs and sound. It's great. Yeah, artisanal heirloom homemade ray guns. Ray guns. Um, Richard came in with a project that could probably use a ray gun, but he doesn't have one yet. He made a gas mask with a NeoPixel ring and these like NeoPixel effects. So there's like this green toxic goo looking type stuff. And he also made a fur wrap um, that has the chameleon scarf code in it that Becky wrote uh, in a previous Wearable Wednesday. So it like has LED effects and, uh, and pulses LEDs. And it looks cool because it's, it's fur, so it's like really diffused. Um, C. Scott came in, showed off a couple projects. He's squeezing one of his synthesizers into Eurorack format. Uh, so he's going super small. He also made um, NeoPixel LED house edging. So he's going to have LEDs around. He has like a, you know, kind of a classic ranch house. So he's have LEDs around it. And he made it in waterproof and his PVC. And it's going to look good. Um, he showed off some old chips, including a um, 1980s or 1970s 555, which is in a still working project. This thing, the... Solid state, lasts forever. And 7400 Logic Dina that has no input protection diet, so we won't take it out of the phone. Please just want to kill it. And in progress, a headphone amplifier made with a valve. So it's like a tube headphone amp. So it's got a tubby warm sound and drains batteries. Um, the Galaxy Man showed up with a handmade painted TARDIS box that he uses to store all of his Doctor Who themed stuff. And it looks like a very handy box indeed. And of course it stores more than it seems. And then um, Doug came in, and he's actually got a Halloween theme project as well. He made, he has made and sells um, marionette ghost um, frames, and so you, you, it's a, it's a frame with these moving aluminum struts, and then there's a motor that that moves all the different struts and face. So it, it, it's a mechanical thing that looks like it's moving, and you, you when you put like a, um, a sheet and a wig <clears> on it, it <throat> looks like it's a, it's a ghost and it's kind of yeah. coming at you. And because it's, the motion is out of phase, it, look, it doesn't look like it's repeating. It looks like it's kind of random and arbitrary and scary. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I've seen a couple of videos of these um, mechatronic props and like some of them are like totally terrifying. Yeah. Uh, you know, I wonder if for the, the animal and human behavior experts out there, if, yeah. a, if an animal sees something robotically doing the same thing, do they know that it might not be real? Like people, they're just like, we know right away if something's moving in a certain way, we're like, oh, that's robotic. It's doing the same thing, but yeah. if it, but it has to be a little bit more organic. I don't know. We gotta we gotta talk probably, to the researcher. Probably have the, someone. Maybe next week, and then we should show yeah. up on the show and tell and show off their projects. That yeah. was the show and tell. Yeah, and one thing with the show and tell. So, um, in addition what? to all participants going to ask seen on the show and tell sticker, this week we looked at some of the projects, and if the project could use an, an audio effects board. Um, we, um, we sent them one. Away, yeah. Our sound effects board is really popular, and we, we're running out of stock fast, but for the people that we know have a project and are doing something, uh, we, gave, we gave some away. You That's never right. know what's going to happen on the show and tell. You, you can get freebies. You never, 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 never know. know. Okay. That's why you should show up. How do they show up on the show and tell? Super easy. If you would like to show up next week on the show and tell, show off your project, and maybe get a cool free thing. You know, Usually it's like the same thing we're going to give away on the trivia prize, so like maybe... Mm. Yeah, like, like, it's like, almost like, as, if, as if they're getting the trivia prize without even... Doing you don't any even trivia. have to do any trivia. You they just show up and share a project. Just show up and share a cool project. Uh, you can do that by going to our Google Plus page at plus.google.com slash plus symbol Adafruit. You yeah. need to have a Google Plus account, but they're free. And then find the thread where we say, come in here to get added to the show and tell circle. 
And then when you respond and say, I would like to get added to Show and Tell Circle, I want to have <clears> a project on next week's Show and Tell, we'll click on your avatar and say, click, add to Circle, and then you will join the Show and Tell Circle, and then every week you will be invited yeah. to show off your project. It can be retro technology, it can be crafting, it can be electronics, it can be computers, it can be programming, it can be art. It can kind of be nearly anything. If there's cats, like the bonus points. That's fine. Yeah. Good, good thing for cats, and connected. Uh, we like sciencey stuff, but yeah. all is welcome. So I'm pointing out we probably need, as seen on show and tell, ba uh, uh, embroidered yeah. badges. I might we, do that. Right now we working have stickers. On. So tell them what the uh, stickers. I'm working on it. Okay. So uh, next up, back to the mailbag. Tell them the stickers. What about stickers? You didn't tell them that everyone gets a sticker. Everyone does get a sticker. And I said, everyone and gets I, a sticker. And I said well, they also get the soundboard thing. Right. But, okay. but it, but, I you missed know, it. Usually it, you say it when I have this thing up. It's a deal so nice, I'll say it twice. Okay. Okay. You get a sticker. Okay, okay. mailbag. Yeah, this is back in the mailbag. Okay. He stops by and he says things. So we get letters from people around the world every single day. And uh, sometimes they mail them in the mail. Sometimes they email them. Sometimes they tweet them. Sometimes they do stuff. But we read these to the entire company every week. And we share these on our site, this mailbag. Yeah. This one is from Megan. You guys are amazing. Just bought some things for the hubs for the Christmas. And your stuff got to us, APO, really quick. Such a happy customer. Mail to APO can oftentimes be a nightmare. Thank you tons for realizing we are people, too. Thank you, Megan. This is someone who lives on an Air Force base, a military base, somewhere stationed somewhere around the world. It's yep. government work or whatever. Um, we do free shipping to those locations. That's right, and you get priority mail. You usually get yeah. it, I mean, not in two <laughs> days, but usually within a week. And uh, it comes with delivery confirmation tracking. So uh, definitely, it's if you are on an APO, make sure to put an APO or AFO or whatever uh, into the address so you will get the free shipping priority mail, and you'll get it super fast. Okie dokie. Next up, um, jobs board. Adafruit jobs board. If you're looking for a job, post up your skills on adafruit.com slash jobs. If you are a cool maker company, hacker company, artist company, engineering company, you have all sorts of um, hardware startups mm -hmm. swarming our jobs board because they're finding really great candidates to work for them. If free. You're, if your schools. Yeah, don't yeah. have a recruiter. Yeah, it's free. And uh, Lady Aid and I approve all of them, so there's nothing weird. There's no scams. And I, and, I mean, and I mean weird as in like annoying scammy stuff. There's never like, we can't tell you the name of the company you have to apply. Like, Work from that. home and make $50,000 a year. Nothing weird. Yeah. These are real companies with real jobs yeah. that pay real money. Some Unless the, they say it's volunteer. Some of the scammy people that I say no to, they get pretty mad. But Good. You know, I'm just like, yeah, there's plenty of other places elsewhere. for that. Yeah. Go to monster.com. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Tell them uh, what's uh, what okay. is this post. This one is a shop supervisor position opening at Hampshire College, Shop Supervisor Center for Design in Amherst, Massachusetts. The shop supervisor is responsible for shop supervision, training, and <laughs> advising of students, faculty, maintenance, and improving improvement for the Center of Design. Duties include providing instructions, ongoing supervision, and assistance to students, design consultation, performing facility equipment, maintenance, and improvements. I think I said the same thing twice. Anyways, <laughs> um, you can apply right online. Um, it's jobs.hampshire.edu. Check it out. We'll see. This is probably a good job if you're like, if you're, especially if you're a maker who's very good with lathes and CNCs and laser cutters and printers and painting and like you have, I mean, it's going to be more uh, mechanical um, than electrical, but working in Amherst, it's a, it's a beautiful town and uh, I, would, I would love to live there. That'd be great. Great okay. hiking there too. Next up. In the news, we, there's two things. This was a, um, it's my hardware section. Uh, Confessions hardware. of a Hardware Startup by Mike Esty. He was on the show. He has a long story about his role in, as a CTO and as being a hardware maker. I've known Mick when he was uh, uh, doing cable set-top box uh, development. Then he was at Apple, and now he's doing a startup. It's Other Mill. We have another mill. He works for a company called um, Other Lab, mm -hmm. right? Other Lab? Other it's brand. other machine. Other machine. Other, yeah. other machine.co. But it, the name of their product, which we have, is other mill. It's the other mill. So speaking of other mill, there was a profile that they did. They did a case study on Adafruit because we have an other mill and we use it for fabrication of things here. We actually use it quite a bit. We yeah, we used it all today. It was and like so, cutting for like eight hours. Yeah. So they came by and they did a case study. So if you want to learn a little bit about the insights of how Adafruit does stuff, mm. look on the other machine site. Look for the Lady Ada case study talking about other mills. So if you're ever thinking about getting one of those, we actually use it here. It is a really sweet machine. We use it for uh, PCB cutouts. We use it for designing our testers, actually, because we often redesign or update our testers. And we, want, we don't want to have to wait two weeks or a week and a half or whatever to get PCBs of testers. So we can 
design them in-house and cut them. And it's not a cost thing, although it, it, it does help because, um, you know, we can make a PCB for like three or four bucks and we have the end mills in the store now and we just we just cut it and then the people who are in the sh in Adafruit have learned how to do PCB design. So if you're interested in teaching a bunch of people PCB design, having a PCB mill is like really nice because if they're learning how to do it and they make a mistake, they find out in three hours, not in two weeks. Yeah. Um, it's only good for, in my opinion, like kind of big parts. And it can do double-sided, but I don't use a double-sided, I use a single-sided. Um, but single-sided through-hole, it's excellent. And for a lot of really basic tester designs, you just have to route some wires and have like a button and like some LEDs and something. It's w it's way faster and more durable than doing it all on perf board, and then you can cut as many as you need. Okay, next up. Um, we kind of get dragged into this story a little bit. Um, so there was something called Anonabox, is a Tor hardware router, and it was suspended. On Kickstarter, get up to five hundred eighty-five thousand uh, dollars. It's yeah. incredible. And uh, the reason Impressive. why, yeah, the reason why we got mentioned because a lot of people really wanted this. And they said, "This is such a good idea. I really want this because there's a there's a there's a pie, onion pie router thing that Adafruit did, and there's other." People that wanted this anonymous thing, but they were making this as just this low-cost appliance. You know, our yeah. thing you have to make yourself a little bit. And there's actually a reason why I do that, though. Yeah, so I agree. So I, I do it for a reason. I was going to ask you a question. You're so, going to ask me so, why. So I was going to say, Lady, why would you want to make your own Tor Raspberry Pi, Adafruit Onion Pi thing, as okay. opposed to just buy this appliance-like thing, or in this case, maybe something that wasn't even made by these folks that just got some off-the-shelf stuff? So why I'm, would you want to do that? I'm a super, I'm super nerdy about this. So okay. this is why I do not have a ready-to-go um, onion router device. Um, first off, I don't want to imply that like uh, we're in any way endorsed or paid for by Tor. We have no relationship to Tor. Yeah. We think Tor is awesome, yeah. but when we have the pack, it's the, the the onion pie pack. It can be used for anything. It's not it's not sold with Tor or like you know yeah. it's it's open software. You can grab it. Second, when when people get the pack, I do want them to go step by step through the installation process so that they can see, like, we document, like, all, everything that you do and all the source code. Like, we have a compiled binary, but we provide the source code and we're like, here, you can compile it. So there's no question that we did not do anything to affect the... We're not. We're not. Eff we're, we're not efficacy yeah. of Tor. We're not sending you a man in the middle attack machine. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get into this like how you prove and I, like I don't want to get into this like prove prove me prove it or don't disprove it because yeah. it's. I, you it's, can always look at the source code. You're in control every step of the way. It's your right. hardware. It's your software. You own you it. It's yours. It. Yeah. You install it and then you, you're starting with a, a bare SD card. You install Raspbian. There's the source code for Raspbian, or you can install. Actually, you don't even not need to use Raspbian. You can use um, now. You can use FreeBSD, which is now available. Yeah. And we'll talk about that. So, um, yeah, we do not have a ready-to-go pack. It's quite easy to set up. It only takes, like, <clears> two hours or an hour to do. Yeah. But I'm kind of, I don't want to get into the, like, it is a ready-to-go tour thing. I don't, I don't. No, people should, and you know what? Like, here's the thing. If you don't, this isn't that hard of a project. If you can't do that, you probably should rethink how willing you are to trust something else. If you're trying to do anonymous communications, if you're trying to, protect your identity yeah. online, if you're trying to avoid all the crazy stuff that happens online, if that's the reason you're doing it, spend a little time to learn how to do this because you'll actually come out the other side um, a, yeah, lot, a also, lot smarter, you have these skills, you'll know what to look for and inspect. We also put in like a lot of warnings during the process of, of installing the software that this does, is not a magical box. Um, yeah. Running toward is this, does not make what you do anonymous. All it does is hide exactly what IP address and port you're coming from. That and that's that's really the only thing it does. Um, it does not encrypt your traffic. It does not hide your traffic. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't do anything to it. Um, at the exit node, they see everything you're doing. So yeah. you have to use SSL if you want this to be at all like effective, yeah. um, if possible. And you have to like open up an anonymous browser so you don't have any cookies, and you have to like hide you know any fingerprints at like other fingerprints type of thing like session information yeah. so there's a lot of steps you have to do to use tour i mean if you want to use it just because you want to add to the traffic that's fine because it, it does benefit it does to help, have traffic yeah. um and also you can turn it into um uh, an intermediary uh, tour bridge or even an exit node if you're if you're really into that yeah. Um, but I want people to know what they're getting into before they do it. So that's yeah. my little like tour rant. Yeah. So anyways, they, it, we got mentioned a million times because people are like, oh, you can just do, you can just build this on your own and know for sure yeah. everything about it. Anyways. So just, I just be aware. Also, if you are interested in tour, read about it so you know what it does. Yeah. Uh, so you don't get make yourself 
get in trouble. Okay, Adafruit Learning System. Okay. How many sure. tutorials do you think there are? We have like 620 tutorials right now. That's the right answer. Yeah. We have 620 tutorials in Adafruit Learning System, one of the biggest online places. Um, free tutorials, teaches everything. This week. I can't wait till 1,000. Can you yeah. imagine 1,000? This week, our friend John Park, who is now um, doing a great, amazing new job. His new yeah. thing is uh, he's a producer at like Disney Research. He's a Disney. He's yeah. actually he's the guy who the the Imagineers go to for help. Yeah. So he did a That's tutorial cool. um, on our site. This is a NeoPixel uh, dust bag, and also we've known John since uh, the Make, make uh, TV, TV show days yeah. and Make, and, and we just saw make. him. We just saw him recently. So, anyways, he did it. He did a guide. This is really great. He made this for his daughter, yeah. who was who is I guess dressing up as a fairy pirate. Yeah, fairy pirate. And she wanted a I guess a bag of fairy booty. Yeah. Um, and so this is it's actually very interesting because um, what, what I like about John is he does bring in this, this sort of like Disney Imagineer creativity and also it looks really good. Like he knows how to make something look really professional. Um, and he used a capacitive touch switch so when you touch it, it turns on and it has to, you can't just bump it against something, you actually have to touch it with your hands. And I think that's cool. It adds like a little bit of like tactility and yeah. feedback to um, this design, but it's a, it's a great project okay. and uses Trinket or Gemma and NeoPixels, and uh, Next hopefully up, I'll post it before we We just posted this tutorial, this audio effects soundboard. It's updated for the uh, new products that we added yep. in. So um, we'll talk about these new products uh, coming Shortly. up soon. Yep. So we'll just, we'll, we'll just but give it We that. updated it to, to just talk about and have data sheets for all the new stuff. Yeah. Next up. This is the AR1100 resistor touchscreen controller guide. We're using the AR1100 chip for our resistive touch to USB converter. And we had a couple people had some questions about it. Also, the software is a little bit mm, mm. not obvious sometimes. Yeah. So we took a bunch of screenshots of how to calibrate it. Um, if you bought a touchscreen from us, it is pre-calibrated. Let's say you want to calibrate it again because you're just that kind of person. It's a step-by-step -step guide on how to do that. And we'll have more AR1100 touchscreen based stuff. I love it because it just looks like a mouse. It works with any operating system, like okay. out of the shelf. It's great. Okay. Next up, uh, how long will it take for my order to arrive if I ship at UPS Crown? Good question. Great question. We have a complete learning guide. You put in your zip code, um, all orders ship from Adafruit. That's one thing we don't drop ship, right? Every order ships from Adafruit New mm -hmm. York City. This is where it ships from. Only ships from USA, New York City. UPS just a couple blocks away, postal a couple blocks away. That's why we ship mm -hmm. super fast. I guess you're super fast, yeah. but if you want to estimate, we have a guide. I'll check that out. It is handy because some people, like, they don't know what zip code it ships from, um, but now you do, and you can yeah. tell, especially, first of all, the ground map, by the way, it's not guaranteed. Yeah. It's a guide, especially as the weather gets colder and snowier and rainier and stormier. There can be delays, so don't remember, forget about that, about yeah. the holidays, but if you see that it's going to take at least five days, maybe it's time to upgrade your order to second day. Yeah. Okay. Next up, uh, this guide just went live. You'll see this on the... 3D Thursday feature show everything tomorrow. This is the animated scrolling Mario Clouds TFT Droolery. Look for that tomorrow. Um, we went over this one today on wearable electronics with Becky yeah, Stern. This, this is cool. LED prosthetic eye, or as I'm calling it, this is Dune Punk. I actually really like the glasses that he made, the round yeah. glasses, just with this, this stripe of LED. Yeah. That's right, it's cool. And uh, you can see it in action here a little bit. There's all sorts of cool things that you can do. That's Really? Yeah, this is from Telly. This is a cool project. This is really goth. Yeah, this is super gothy. Who's Telly? I don't even know. Telly. Telly's the person who wrote this. Okay. Wrote this thing. okay. Okay. Next up, Time Travel Tuesday. We look back in the world of makers, artists, hackers, engineers, science, you name it. Something's going on. This week, 1911, Mary Blair, American illustrator and animator, is born. Mary Blair, born Mary Robinson, is an American artist who is prominent in producing art and animation for the Walt Disney Company, drawing concept art for such films as Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, Song of South, Cinderella. So she also did designs for It's a Small World, the theme park, and uh, the Walt Disney Contemporary Resort. And she also did a bunch of illustrated um, uh, thing, uh, illustration books and honored as a Disney legend in 1991. You don't hear a lot about the individual animators I've heard about, like, back in the day. Saul Bass, but I've not heard of her before. That's right. This is, this that's is Mary Blair. But like, we're seeing her art. It's very recognizable. Yeah, it's like, oh, that's her. That's her, yeah. I'm like, oh, I've seen you know those, that art from like the... 40s and 50s especially. Yeah, okay. 50s, 60s. Next, uh, wearable Wednesday. Wearable electronics. Okay. Every week we have Becky Stern, Wednesdays, 2 p.m. We do wearable electronics. It's the best live wearable electronics show in the world. More than a year now. Yeah. Uh, this week, here's a fun video. This is the video with Sally, who is 
here not too long ago. We took some photos and we did a video. It was Sally a great Vires. video. One of the best e-textile people in the world. She's amazing. Next up, here you are in front of a bunch of inflatable creatures at Comic Con. This was at the oh yeah, this is two weeks ago. Yeah, this was at the um, Jacob Javits Center. We went to the uh, Comic Con. Comic Con New York City. And uh, we met a lot of cool people. And boy, we're, it was crowded. It was tons of people. And here's what I'll say: the the vibe that I got was this is bigger than Maker Fairs, and these oh, yeah. folks are just beginning. Just beginning, as in like one out of maybe eighty thousand are getting into electronics. Oh my gosh! There is there is so much potential. So much potential. We saw so many costumes, but if, surprisingly enough, very very few of them had uh, any kind of LED effects or sound effects or electronics or robots or motors or whatever. We did see some that were actuated, um, but they used like pneumatic actuators or spring actuators. We didn't see anything that was. Um, like took advantage of like the amazing Arduino ecosystem. So uh, we're going to try to um, seed some really cool NeoPixel and sound effect boards and Arduino boards to uh, people who do cosplay and costuming and prop making and see if we can get some of these amazing yeah. projects to be even more amazing. Yeah, super cool community, super cool people. I can't Great wait. People. I can't wait to see what they do when they um, use all this electronic stuff. So yeah. next up. 3D stuff. I have a couple of things in the world of 3D. First, we have our video, because since we played the video from the previous week, this is a great 3D printing, electronic, and cosp cosplay costuming comic <sighs> project. It's a lot. Go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another 3D Thursday. I'm Noah. And I'm Pedro. Today, we're going to be working on a cosplay-inspired project in collaboration with James Bruton from X Robots. That's right. We're prototyping a Unibeam, the infamous repulsion weapon from Iron Man. This 3D printed prop is going inside of James's Hulkbuster project. That's right. The Hulkbuster is a massive Iron Man-inspired suit James built with 3D printed parts and various other materials. So check out James's YouTube channel for more details on the Hulkbuster project. Hulkbuster! So to make the Unibeam circuit, we're using two NeoPixel rings, a couple of single NeoPixel LEDs, and Gemma, which is an easy to use bite-sized microcontroller. NeoPixel LEDs are individually addressable and can be connected together in a chain, sharing just one data connection along with power and ground. Be sure to check out our guide on the Adafruit learning system to follow along with the circuit diagram so you can build one at home. You can also find the link in the description below. Silicone coated wires are great for these types of projects because they offer that extra flexibility. Some 26 to 30 gauge wires work best here. The artwork for the 3D printed parts were designed in Adobe's Illustrator and imported into 123D Design as an SVG. That way we can make the shapes a lot easier. The parts are designed to print support free and just happens to take full advantage of our big printing area on the LOL's Bot TAS 4. With the components wired up, it's easy to fit the circuit inside the printed parts because everything just snap fits together. The multi-layer design really adds depth to the details and incorporates design elements from your favorite sci-fi movies. And now we have a giant 3D printed Unibeam. Just don't look directly into it because it's pretty bright. So if you want to see the final Unibeam in action, watch James Bruton's channel for more. Thanks so much for watching and if you dig this project, please let us know by clicking that like button below. And don't forget to subscribe for more 3D printed projects from Adafruit. See you guys next week. Bye everybody. Okay, so don't forget. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, 3D Thursday with Matt, Noah, and Pedro. 3 p.m., 3D Thursday, 3D Hangout. Okay, I got some Raspberry Pi stuff. So the first bit of Raspberry Pi news yeah. is um, we have the Adafruit Kegomatic. And since it's Halloween, we changed the Kegomatic to have all sorts of gross-sounding liquids. So if you go to 
twitter.com slash Adafruit Cakebot, you'll see um, someone poured um, a boo, as in boo, boo, boos, monster mucus, dead man's brew, St. Elmo's fire, gray goo, and spider smoothie. So we change it. So spider we have smoothie. yeah. So we have beer and we also have iced coffee on tap. Yeah. We have two kegs and they tweet and they use Raspberry Pi, and uh, so we change the word. So if you're interested in pointing to a project that does all this cool stuff. Um, it's a good, cool Raspberry Pi project. But one of the things um, that uh, happened this week, I think this was... Uh, this is from Hackaday. I this, we yeah, this this is, on Hackaday covered this and so did um, TechCrunch because th this was the TC Disrupt, event. Yeah, yeah this Disrupt event. And so um, it looks like there's going to be some stuff in the world of Raspberry Pi. Pi Top, a B-plus laptop kit that's pulling in backers left and right, completely unaffiliated with the Pi Foundation. They were, they were talking about that. Um, and it looks like um, the hats are in full swing. Um, and the exciting news is that the sixty, the six hundred thousand dollars spent on DSI connectors for those four million Raspberry Pis about to play off. Evan hopes that an official touchscreen will be available for the end of two thousand fourteen or early two thousand fifteen. He showed off a seven-inch capacitive touch panel that will attach to display board stacked on a Pi, effectively turning into a Pi tablet. Ooh. Um, he said they're not going to be making a Model C. Instead, they're working on a revision A plus and they're going to make an announcement soon. Okay. So that's like, you know, rumor central for what's going on. Okay. So anyways. A plus will probably be like the B plus, but without four USB ports. It'll have only one USB port and no yeah. Ethernet. So even less power, but it'll still have all the GPIO pins. Yeah. You can use like Wi-Fi, you can just attach a hub or something. Okay, next up. Don't forget, the code is AudioFX, 10% off in the Adafruit store. Mm. Get on before midnight tonight. Big deal because you should get stuff before Halloween. Um, yep. You still have time. It's that time, Lady Ada. It is new products. New! New, 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 new. Yeah. Okay. Okay, first up. Print. Printer. Print about simple, simple metal. Yeah, we actually, kind of we will have these very, very shortly in the store. We wanted to update, we wanted to update the photo and description. Yeah. Um, when we get these next, it will be the Rev F, which comes with a slightly improved like control board, I think, and also has um, a distance sensor for auto leveling, or it'll at least tell you before it hits the bed. I don't know the details of exactly how it works, but it now has this, it's the Rev F, and we will have them soon. I believe they're even the same price as the Rev these, which we had before. Yeah. Um, so if you're looking to get a printer bought Metal Simple, it is never yeah. a better time than ever to sign up and get notified in the next couple days when we get these in the store. And from what I understand, Brick, the founder is doing a documentary on RepRap. So oh, cool. things are getting weird. Lots of 3D printer documentaries. Um, next up, cable. It's a cable. Now it looks boring, but it's actually a really sweet micro USB cable. This is a six foot long micro USB cable. And the reason it took us a little bit longer than usual to get this two meter cable in is that we specified extra beefy wire inside of it. So it has 24 gauge power wire and 26 gauge data lines. So it's um, an extra thick cable. So it's good because if you're using this for high current draw, um, if you're using this for something that's gonna draw like two amps, um, so from like a USB power adapter, like you're powering a tablet or a Raspberry Pi or a BeagleBone, this USB cable will have less voltage drop. So it was a custom made cable because we didn't want to cheap out uh, usually if you get a two meter cable, it's like 28 gauge or 30 gauge wire. It's super, super skinny. Um, this stuff is much better. So we have that in the store now. Okay. And uh, speaking of Raspberry Pi stuff. We have a new case. This time, this is an upgrade or update to the Model B Plus case that we had before. Um, this case is, it's milled out of aluminum or machined out of aluminum. And it's beautiful and it's very durable and it fits the um, B plus quite nicely. I can show it on the overhead. Yeah, considering that the B plus just came out, this is, this uh, is this well, fast. this is made by uh, Pazdan, and they actually um, get, get some overhead. Oh, sorry, they uh, yeah, back it up. They uh, actually do the machining in house. That's why they could probably do it so fast. So it fits inside, and then it's not quite. I didn't screw it in, so it's not like perfectly lined up. But if I did, it would have the USB and Ethernet and then HDMI audio and micro USB and then the, you can even get the micro SD card slot. You can mount it. And it has these um, this lovely kind of grill topper. Or if you want to access the DSi um, slash, uh, uh, sorry, the um, 
camera or display port for this like new display. Um, it gets put in like this. It's a nice brushed aluminum case. And then you can even get to the GPIO. There, it looks like there's a little slot here that you can get the GPIO cable out if you want to attach a GPIO cable or a cobbler to it. It comes with some mounting hardware. It's a very lovely and extremely durable case. So if you want a metal case, this is one of the few few B plus metal cases available. They take quite mm -hmm. a while to get spun up. So okay, nice. Next up, if you're into drones, if you're into quadcopters, if you're into the Iris Plus, we have it. So here you go. This is new from 3D Robotics. It's the new Iris Plus. Um, I guess, you know, I kind of think this is like the ultimate GoPro um, drone right now. Um, it's the latest version of the, their multi-copter. Uh, they're probably one of the best known um, maker companies that do drones. Mm -hmm. So they have a giant community. They have a lot of open source stuff that goes along yep. with these things. A lot of open source hardware, open source and, software. Yeah. And so they this do is, a lot of the development in, in open uh, yeah. quadcopter and drones and APM and all that so stuff. So when I think about that, and we had Chris Anderson on our hardware hangout. So if you ever, uh, we'll just search, just search for Chris Anderson hardware hangout, you can get an idea of what's going on with 3D robotics. So they're an open source. Uh, venture-backed company. It's the only drone that we we sell because I think there's like two basic types. If you're someone that's in the drones, there's the just want to fly it and who cares about anything how it actually works. You just want to mm -hmm. fly the thing, and then you want to kind of understand everything and maybe do custom applications and develop. Maybe you're doing agriculture. Maybe you're doing who knows what else. Um, this is kind of the one for you. So more the maker-friendly one. Okay. So anyways, we got it, and uh, this is their second rev. So all the things they learned in the first round. Here you go. Okay. Next up. Very excited about this. This is our 1,000 incredible costume and cosplay ideas. We're getting books in about cosplay. It's like oh, a coffee table book. Yes. It doesn't actually, I just want to clarify, it doesn't have instructions. No. It just has 1,000 photos, and they're like amazing photos. So it's like instead of going on DeviantArt, you can just get this. It has all the best photos ready to go. Yeah. Um, different topics, different shows, movies, games, whatever. You want to flip through some of the... Uh, yeah, so... Um, what I wanted to point out with this is, this is great for people who do costuming now because they'll get inspired to do stuff. And then for the people who do uh, electronics, you'll get inspired on what you can actually make. So one example is these wings, right? And so it's like, okay, I want these big wings. I'm gonna look at this and get ideas. But then since you're in the Adafruit world, you probably put EL on it. You'll probably start to think, what, can I, what type of electronics can I put on all this stuff? So it's just a fantastic um, book that really celebrates and showcases That's all the cool costumes. It's beautiful, Yeah. I have so, it here. It's big. It's, uh, it's a hardcover, too. Let me hold this up. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not a hardcover. Sorry. Hard, it's, it's hardish a, cover. It's a soft cover, but it's like a firm soft cover. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's just like tons. And it, you know, there's the name of the costume, the person who made it. Um, like, this is all the Halo costumes. Here's like, you know, 50 Zelda princess costumes. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is great. And it's really neat because I, I like that it just combines everything I like. It's all about the, the makers themselves. They're part of this, but they're also um, picking a character that they really admire. Sometimes they're ones that they've made up. Yeah. And uh, it's just really beautiful stuff. The photography has to be great. So it kind of combines a little bit of everything. Fashion in a weird way. So, all right. Next up. What's this? Ah, this know. is the um, JTAG base, which is, uh, sorry, the J-Link base. This is a JTAG SWD Programmer and debugger. It's from Seger, which is a company that is like this is pretty much what they do. Um, if you are interested in doing stuff with ARM chips of any sort, uh, chances are you'll need a, you know a JTAG programmer. And even though you can kind of make a cheap one from like an FTDI chip or whatever, um, usually it doesn't have like debug points or it doesn't support every single chip or it doesn't do SWD. So the the JLink is like the gold standard of ARM programming and debugging. Um, dongle things. It uses USB and it has a JTAG port there and a cable. You know, basically any chip you're using, it will be supported by the J-Link. It is like the standard. So, you, and it, it comes with free firmware updates. So when you plug it in and you run the software, it'll like get the latest firmware for you and um, download it. So you don't have to worry about like, oh, you know, do I have the latest firmware? Does it support the latest chip? Um, and we have two versions and the base is the professional version. And Seger is really nice. What they did is they have the EDU version, which we've already stocked, and the base version. 
And the EDU version is for nonprofit, um, educational, student work. Like you're not selling the project you're working on, you're just reverse engineering something for a hobby or you're programming a chip to learn ARM or whatever. But if you are a developer and you're making money off your product or you're selling it or you're a contractor or whatever, basically there's some sort of money or company involved, the base is what you should get. It's actually the same exact product. Um, I mean, it, the EDU one knows it's EDU, the base one knows it's basic. The, the software will tell you and it'll say like, hey, by the way, you're using the EDU version. They have the same functionality, but you know, they're very kind in not requiring you to fax them an ID. And you should reward them by not being these kinds of jerks. Like they're not punishing students by um, upgrading your EDU to a base or buying a base if you're, if you're going to make a product or you know, use it for a company purpose. Um, we don't check your email address. We don't check your ID. Uh, we trust you. So That's do the cool. right thing and, and treat them kind because they made the best tool in the known universe for this stuff. I use mine almost every day now, and it's awesome. Really? Yeah. That's high praise. High right. praise. Okay. And the star of the show this week, beside you, is a new board. So new. This new, is new, the new, 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 new audio effects soundboard. We have... Um, this is the, the next one. We already had one in the store, but this one is even better. And what makes this one better is it has a built-in audio amp. Yeah. So we already have a bunch of great Class D audio amps in the store, and we previously had a version that had just headphone out. This time we now have the audio effect board with uh, two Class D, sorry, a Class D stereo, two watt output. It can drive speakers, and it can be very loud. Um, like, you really don't need another amplifier. Like, this is kind of it. You can use... 8 ohm or 4 ohm speakers. It can basically get up to 3 watts if you really, if you don't mind a little bit of distortion, like 10 t 10% th THD distortion. And uh, I'll explain what the audio board is because this might be the first time yeah. you're learning about it. I, I have some questions on behalf of the world okay. with this. Uh -huh. So I just want to look at this. If I understand this correctly, I you, haven't said anything yet. You don't need. A microcontroller. There's no the microcontroller's already on there. Uh, you don't uh, need an external one. So you no don't need Arduino. No Arduino, nothing. No programming. Okay. And the reason why we have one with and without an amp is some people want to build an amplifier because they want to. Some people want to use like a, a portable um, speaker, or they want to use a really big amplifier, or they want to actually just have it be a headphone output. So for those people, we don't. We just have a headphone jack. You know, you can plug into your stereo or a power like USB speaker. Um, like uh, Phil B had, you know, a, a portable speaker that clipped onto his belt. He wanted to use that. So use the headphone version. Um, it's a little bit less expensive because we don't have the amplifier built in. Mm. But for most projects, you might want, you know, if you want to have a speaker, you should get the one with the amp because it's a five bucks more, and it just, you know, just basically connect any speaker you find, and it will just work. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to shut. So you're giving people choices. There's, there's choices. Okay, we're going to so do, we're going to do a live demo. I'll do the demo, but I'll actually just also just talk about um, what this is, and I'm going to use this book just to get the speakers off the desk so they don't rattle the desk. Um, yeah. So this is the audio board. This is what it is. And I'm pairing it with three AA batteries over here. And I have it um, soldered in on a breadboard with all these buttons. But you can use yeah. any kind of trigger. And a trigger is just a, a button oh. whenever you... I'm probably moving around that way. There you go. Whenever you um, press the button, it triggers a sound. And there's 11 triggers down here. And then there's a couple of buttons like, you know, you want to change the volume or you want to... Um, so this is like audio output, or if you want to use the um, debug output, there's a serial command if you want. Um, and here's the two terminal blocks where the speakers are connected, and this is going to be a little loud, so I'm actually going to turn the speakers kind of over, because I don't want to make it too loud yet. Um, and when you turn it on, just power it with a couple batteries. Um, you can press any of these triggers, and each trigger, by naming the file, um, the number, it will play when that trigger is pressed. So if you have track nine, then when you press the ninth button, track nine, it just says track nine. That's the, okay. I didn't want to use it. Audio and and what did you name the file? Uh, T09.wave or okay. aug. So you can compress or uncompressed audio. And you can basically, whenever you press the button, it plays audio. Track eight, track seven, track six latching. Tra and then we have special effects that you can do with the board as well. So for example, I think on um, pin number one, it's random mode. So every time you play it, you can have it have nine different, 10 different audio tracks, and it will randomize which one plays when you press that button. So let me try pressing pin one. Track one, random zero. So that is the zeroth file. Track one, random one, 
Random one. This time it's like... Track one. Random two. Wow, it's playing them all in order. Okay, well, sometimes if it's random, it's Track actually going to play them in order. Random three. Track one. Random four. Track one. Random one. Track Wait, one. Wait, why is it... Random two. <laughs> it's like the one time it's playing <laughs> randomly. Um, we also have a next mode. I think it's... Track three. Uh... Track f track five dot zero. This one does play in order track each time. Five dot okay. One. Track five dot two. Random mode usually is random. I don't know why it's not random right now. Um, no. And then we also have um, a, a hold to play mode, so it only plays when you hold the button down. Track four. So as soon as I let go, it stops playing. Track four hold. And then we also have a latching mode that will start playing as soon as you press the button, and then when you let go, it'll Keep playing it, and when you press it again, it will stop. Track six latching. Track six latching. So it's good for effects where you want to have a sound start, play, and loop when you press a button, and then you don't have to keep holding it down. So with all these different effects and the different buttons, you can basically make most projects and props and um, whatever sound effect thing yeah. you want. Um, and with the built-in amplifier, you actually like don't need anything but a couple batteries. And then we even have speakers in the store, so you can just like toss on a speaker or two, yeah. and you're ready to go. And it can play, it is like CD quality sound, I just can't play audio because YouTube will shut down yeah. um, the stream because it'll detect it. And we looked around, anything out there doesn't even do all this, and it's way more expensive, and you can't put your own sounds on it. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. You can put your sounds on <laughs> Yeah, it does <laughs> more than just say these numbers. Right. Well, <laughs> you can put any sounds you want on it. I have to do like something that you can yeah. just tell which And it shows up press. as a USB drive when you when plug, you plug it, it, in. it in ah you just drag your files over so you just drag your files over and we yeah. have a tutorial on how to you know generate your files and drag them over you can use compressed audio and with compressed audio we have a 16 megabyte version so it can play about 16 minutes of stereo compressed audio like high quality yeah um and we have a two megabyte version which is what most people probably need for sound effects and it can play a couple minutes of compressed audio or like half a minute of uncompressed audio yeah so I predict and super easy. Yeah, next year you're gonna see all the Ghostbuster Proton packs and every every thing that doesn't make any audio that's a yeah. prop or something use this. Yeah, anytime I you want to so. have like a wearable or a project that it just it something happens like a sensor and it plays audio and we have projects that you can also trigger you can trigger it from microcontroller just by toggling the yeah. pin. But for a lot of people having a switch um, or like a sensor or you know, it doesn't have to be a button, it can be like um, to conductive pieces of fabric, or a vibration switch, or a tilt switch, or you know Velcro or something. Something, anything that turns on and off that you can connect or disconnect to conductive stuff can be used okay. as a trigger. Do you that? Capacitive that is new products. Okay. Good work, Lady Edit. Everyone, cool. don't forget if you want to buy any of this stuff, Audio Effects, ten percent off in the Adafruit store until midnight tonight. We have time for a little top secret, Lady Ada. What is this? Um, no one can ask questions. Just maybe just. So what are you working on here? What it's is funny because we shot this photo right before um, Evan yeah. announced that they're, they're working on a 7-inch This is our 7-inch display. A, a, a inch, well, we have a 5-inch coming out very soon, uh, next couple weeks, and then the 7-inch is the prototype. So yeah. This is an HDMI backpack. It has an HDMI port and touch screen capability built in, and it, you power it over USB. And I just wanted an all-in-one screen that you could use with like any kind of computer, including like a BeagleBone or Raspberry Pi, but also Windows or Mac or okay. Linux, anything. So hopefully it will be out next month or two. All right. It's not out yet, don't ask. Not okay. Don't ask. So now we're going to do questions. Post Yay. your questions on YouTube and on the IRC chat in okay, the stream. Okay, I'm going to press this random one. Yeah. Track one. So let's... Um, random zero. Here's the, uh, here's the thing. Track one. All right. Random four. All right. Okay, so now it's random. All right, so another question. Okay. Um, could the audio board be linked to an FM receiver? Mm, the, uh, the audio effects board stores the audio inside in the flash chip, so you can't have it play any other kind of audio like an FM receiver. It's only meant for pre-recorded audio that you, you drag on like a, a, a WAV file or like a compressed audio file. So it can't, it can't hook in with another thing. You can send it up to an FM transmitter, and like we have one in the store, and when you press a button, it will transmit the FM audio, like if you had it hooked up, but it doesn't work the other way. It doesn't work chord sound. Okay, next up. Um, for the audio trigger board, can you guys make some 3D print whole models? Okay, yeah, we'll do that. We'll, we'll get to it. Yeah. We just released this. Um, we have the dimensions on the tutorial page, but we don't have the 3D model yet. It's pretty skinny, though. It's only a couple millimeters, so it's like a cracker. 
Okay. So model the cracker. Um, for the other product, the um, pie case, is there a slit for the cable connection on the inside? Um, the, the, for the, this top, um, there are slots for the cable, yeah. And then there's a GPIO slot here. The other one um, does not have any slots at all, so it's kind of more elegant, but it doesn't, it, there's no way to get anything out, unless it's a very thin wire and you want to get it through one of these holes. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let me go back up because there was some questions earlier. If you posted your questions earlier in the chat, maybe please post them again because there's a lot of scrolling going on. Time to hydrate. Yeah. Okay. What's the difference between Arduino Gemma and the Adafruit Gemma? It's a good question. For now, the Arduino Gemma doesn't exist quite yet. We're still working on it. Um, the Arduino Gemma will be basically V2 of the Gemma, and uh, code-wise, size-wise, it's a, pretty much exactly the same. But we changed from a mini USB jack to a micro USB jack because we got really good at handling micro USB jacks that don't pull off um, when, you, when you pull on the cable. So that's really good. So we'll have a micro USB jack instead of mini USB. It'll be the same chip, um, same format, same pins. Um, but we made the chip, we use a smaller package of the chip. So there's an on off switch. We have some space from the two um, changes, the micro USB and the, the chip. We added an on off switch so you can turn the project on and off. So I think it's going to be a big improvement. It should be the same price, um, but we just don't know when that's going to come out. We're waiting on Arduino and what they want to do. But hopefully by the end of the year, I hope. Soon, soon, soon. OK, next up. Uh, how can I do serial from uh, AT Tiny? I'm trying to decode IR signals, but when I get up two wires to an Arduino using software serial, all I get is garbage output. Um, that's a good question. Um, I know the AT Tiny can do IR. The problem is that when you IR is very time sensitive, like you have to measure the exact pulses, and then software serial is also very time sensitive. So you might be having a collision where you're trying to use like the same timer or you're trying to do two things at once that are both timing sensitive and the thing like the you know they both get garbled because they're both happening at once it sounds like it might be happening where you have some interrupt corruption okay next up more questions will we have an iphone 5 slash 4 cable breakout or a 30 pin or lightning that's an excellent question we did want to have a lightning breakout but um, because you need to have the ID chip to actually do anything with a lightning connector, and we asked Apple, and they basically told us, like, no, we're never going to let you do that. Uh, we do not have a lightning breakout, because it would not be of any use, in our opinion. Yeah. And so then 30 pin, is, wireless. 30 pin is kind of discontinued, so we decided not to do that. There are other companies that have uh, 30 pin breakouts, like the pod breakout or something, I don't know the name of it. Um, if you Google around, you will find iPod breakouts. Yeah. And someone wanted to know, with that audio board, um, can you use one speaker with it in mono, or is there always stereo output? You can, if you want to save space, I would save your audio as mono. Like we point to some converters you can use to squish your um, stuff from stereo. To, it can do stereo, and it can do CD quality stereo, but if you don't need stereo, Save your audio as mono, so that it takes half as much space, and then just connect a speaker to one output. That's all you. That's all you got to do, and then you only have one output. Okay. Um, someone is saying their question is too big. Um, can they post it up in the forum? Yep, post it up in the do. forum. Yeah, just go to um, forums.adafruit.com. We have all the categories listed. Just put us up there. We're constantly looking at the forums. We have an entire team devoted to it. Engineers, real live engineers, that answer the questions about your Adafruit product purchases. Okay. Uh, let's see. Next up, uh, uh, what are we doing for Halloween? So, um, we're gonna maybe hang at the parade, get some candy. Yeah, I'm, and what are the costumes? Are you gonna have time? Do you think to do anything? I don't know. I'll probably grab something from wearables. We have so wear many it. blinky wearables. We have things. so many wearables. I actually need yeah. to do a costume. But I'm going, last year, all I did was wear like the rabbit helmet and the yeah. Neopixel shoes. I'm gonna do my D my Dune Dune themed costume okay. using only things found here at Adafruit. Okay because I'm probably not going to have time to go out so I can stay here. And no, I can well, maybe we'll do, we'll do stuff. We'll yeah. We're not, I mean, look, we do this for you. We do it for you guys, so you can have a good Halloween. Yeah, okay. Next up, Lady Ada, those are the questions. It is time. Questions? Yeah. Last week I forgot to do a trivia question, so I was reminded. I was reminded I would have to do the trivia question. But we didn't forget this time. Guess no. what you get? 
Yeah, you get the audio effects. You get the audio effects board that you just yeah, saw. Yeah, the one that you just saw. With so the amplifier. The one in the that random we, mode that sometimes it doesn't yeah. seem random. <laughs> yeah, this is the new one that we just released today, the, the one with the amplifier. Okay. That's the prize. Okay, Lita, what are the rules? Rules are if you've won something from this show, uh, you can't enter again, only one winner per my lifetime for this show. If you've won something on 3D Thursday or Werble Wednesday, you can enter. That's fine. One winner per show person. Uh, the prize today is. Uh, audio effects board with amplifier, two megabyte. This is so awesome. You still have time to put this in your audio prop or make a scream box that will scare your cat. First person to type in the correct answer into YouTube or Ustream wins. Yeah, they're pretty synced up tonight, which is nice. They're nice and synced, so okay. let's do this thing. All right, next up. Ready? Yes. The question is, how many tutorials do we have in the Adafruit learning system right now? How many? Yeah. I made a big deal about it before. So all you have to do... It's not 42. It's not 42. How many tutorials are in the Adafruit Learning System right now? I'll give you a hint. If you go to learn.adafruit.com and you scroll all the way down to the bottom, it actually says it. You say it. So let's see who's going to... How gonna... many tutorials? Lots is... Uh, Lots. It, that's not a winning entry, but that's a good entry. It's not... Um, it's not 1 billion. It's not 200. It's more than 200. Is that, is it, let's, let's, let me just make sure. It's not saying it's more than I thought. I was going to say it. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe we made like more tutorials. Did we, did we, put, did we put more? We could have. We might have made some tutorials. No. No. Okay. Close. No. It's almost close. Okay. It is Dewino in the YouTube chat. 620 tutorials. Congratulations. 620. Yeah. Congratulations, do we know you won? Yay! Okay, so let me try to copy this name. You won. Okay, email support at adafruit.com, do we know? And uh, that's e D E W I E A N O. You guessed 620, or you just went to the site and saw that it was 620. That'd be uh, a cool guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this this time it's the, it's uh, YouTube chat that wins. Yeah. There, Score there, one for. YouTube yeah, they, they were they were pretty synced up, um, so this was good. Okay, you All win right. this prize. Email support at info.com to get your prize. Okay, and with that, Lady Ada, is the show. That's, that was tonight's show. Okay. I hope you enjoyed it. Track nine. That's my favorite song. Um, so track nine. We'll be track here nine. next yeah. week, um, same time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. Don't forget 7:30 p.m. on Wednesdays mm -hmm. is show and tell. Yeah. On Wednesdays at 2 p.m. we have. Um, Werbel Electronics and Becky Stern. Starring Becky Stern. Yeah. For special me, guest Becky Stern. For me, and special guest you. Yeah, well, for me personally, next week's a big deal. Not next week, but the week after. It'll what? be the first time since we moved the shows to Wednesdays that I'm not doing payroll. Wow. <laughs> so we have, we, we have, we're growing, Adafruit's growing, and, we, and we're hiring people. We have people. We've been training people. And, I used to uh, do payroll. Yeah. I used to do all the shipping too. Yeah, and so uh, there was a time where I, I tried to help Lady get everything off her plate so she can do engineering. And then I, I put a lot of stuff on my plate, so uh, it won't be as frantic uh, for me. I remember one time, like somebody said, like it's so mean that you got this pick in place without like auto feeders. Like you don't know how hard it is to reload all the feeders for every job. And I'm like, I've loaded thousands of feeders. Yeah, yeah. When we had the pick in place in don't our don't worry, kitchen, I've well, I've been through the feeder. Loading yeah, when we had our our pick in place in the, in our small pick in place in the kitchen, we would eat dinner and change out feeders. I would feeders. change out the feeder on my bed. Yeah. Well, we would when we were Sucks. eating dinner. Yeah. I'd be like, yeah, I'd like eat some food, spin the tape, rewind it, cut it, load it. Anyways, we do a lot here, but you don't do payroll anymore. No, starting next week I don't, or the week after because we just did payroll. Okay. So that's it. Um, don't forget the code is Audio FX, ten percent off in Native Fruit Store. Expires at midnight, and here's a picture of a cat. Meow. Yeah. Thank you, everyone at Adafruit, all the staff members, all the people in the chat, all the community, everyone on the show and tell. We'll see you next week. Here is your moment of Zener. <laughs>